Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We want to start. And I would like to invite Professor Joseph Klafter, Tel Aviv University, President, President of Tel Aviv University. Good afternoon. I feel the excitement here in the auditorium. Welcome to this very, very special event. Uh, and it's a great privilege to host uh, Mr. Jack Ma uh, during her, his first trip to the State of Israel. Thank you very much for coming. We are very happy that Tel Aviv University students have a first-hand opportunity to hear a business visionary who has changed the world. Thank you again for being here. I told Mr. Jack Ma that the students of Tel Aviv University are the best crowd of students you will find in Israel. Tel Aviv University is the first choice of Israeli students. So the potential here is infinite. This is a gold mine. You know, Tel Aviv University graduates are ranked every year among the top 10 graduates of universities that are successful in creating startups backed by venture capital. The only university outside the United States. Since we also promote and encourage a lot of questioning with the students, Israeli students, you know, question a lot. So I think that this uh, evening is really a perfect fit, a perfect dialogue that will be between you and these, I would say, the future entrepreneurs of Israel. I would like to call now upon Professor Frankel, the chairman of the Board of Governors, to introduce Mr. Jack Ma. Thank you very much and uh, welcome everyone. Two universal forces are meeting here this evening, education and e-commerce. They both know no borders and they both present exciting conceptual frontiers to conquer. It is my pleasure to invite to the stage the moderator for this evening's discussion, Mr. Amnon Dick, the president of Israeli Friends of Tel Aviv University and Tau MBA graduate. He's, he is now come back to Tel Aviv University to get a license to come to this room today because he is registered now as a student in our history and philosophies of science and digital culture. Please give him a hand, you already did it. I'd now like to introduce our special guest and good friend, Mr. Jack Ma. He's a lead founder and executive chairman of Alibaba Group, and after this event, he may decide to run for political office in Israel. <laughs> He is a member of the Foundation Board of the World Economic Forum, a UN Sustainable Development Goals Advocate, a Special Advisor to the United Nations Conference on Trade Development for Youth Entrepreneurship and Small Business. Jack graduated from Hanju Teachers Institute, and you will hear more about that, with a major in English language education. Having spent six years as a teacher, Jack is strongly influenced by his past career. You think he is a CEO? What is a CEO? Chief Education Officer. And that's exactly what he is. In 1995, Jack founded China's first online business directory, China Pages. Four years later, he led a team to establish Alibaba.com with a goal of helping small and medium-sized enterprises. Alibaba Group has become the world's largest e-commerce and big data platform, serving tens of millions of businessmen around 
globe through e-commerce, online financial services, cloud computing, and smart logistics. Let me just conclude this brief introduction to tell you that on our way here, and I will not tell you who invented it, because it will be an argument, a new branding concept came about. It is called Ali Tau. <laughs> Tau stands for Tel Aviv University. Ali stands, you choose for what. So this is basically it. Please, Jack Ma, warm <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Ma. It is a great honor and pleasure for us all to have you here. I'm going to start with uh, the conversation with a few questions. At the midst of the 90s, when you started your first internet ventures, the World Web was still at its inception, in its diapers. With some few tens of thousands of sites, today it has many hundreds of millions of sites. What did you see then that others didn't? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's, it's a good question. Um, let, let me answer it this way. I was so bad at schooling. I failed again and again in my uni university and high school test. I tried three years for entering university. And then finally, I got into the poorest university in my city, which today I believe that is the best university in the world. Hanzo Teachers College. So I never thought I would be a teacher. I hate to be a teacher in China. A boy to be a teacher, people look down upon you at that time. So for four years, every day I thought about it is that, what should I do if I graduate? I should not be a teacher. Because when you're a teacher's college, when you graduate, you have to be a teacher because the government paid the money. So when I graduate, I I was assigned to uh, teach in a university because our university was, tr was supposed to train middle school teachers. 500 graduate students, uh, uh, 500 students graduate. Only one of them can be assigned to the university. 499 went to the, went, go to the uh, middle school. So I was the only one chosen to teach in the, in the university. My president, he saw me at the gate, and he said, Jack, I know you will leave, but promise me in five years, teach in that university. Don't leave. Don't, just stay there. So I said, OK, president, I promise. When I joined that university, I did not know my, my pay was so bad. <laughs> I had less than $10 a month. and. Uh, because I graduated from a very poor university. The other teachers, they all from Tsinghua, Beida. So I was looking down at Palm. But I promised for five years. So for five years, I've been teaching, teaching. I worked hard. And, and then I was elected by students, the best teacher of the university. And then I said, OK, five years, I, I kept my promise. Number six, I started to love to be a teacher. And then I thought, everything I taught my students are the things I learned from books. I should leave the school, spend 10, 15 years, get all the experience, and then go back to teach. Then I could be the real a good teacher. That was thinking. Then I went I'm to the United still, States. I'm still waiting for you. Yeah, so then I went to the United States. I found the internet. I just wanted to find a job at that time. I'm looking for a lot of jobs, all filled. People don't want, a, don't want me. They say, I know, even looking for a job in a hotel, they say, hey, you're not good looking enough. <laughs> um, so I uh, discovered the internet in Seattle, 1994, in, uh, in December. I searched the word beer. I was not, I was so scared of the computer. And my friend said, just search whatever you want to search. At that time, there's called Lycos. The, the earliest uh, mosaic, you know, the browser, very early days. They say you search anything. So I first word search beer. There's no beer information on the internet from China. 
There's a Japanese beer, German beer, U.S. beer, and then I search China. Say so there's no data about China. So I thought about, hmm, if I can put some Chinese information on the web, when people find out, that might be a good opportunity. So I did not know internet would be that big. I just want looking for a job. That was the original thinking. I want to leave the school, build up something. And when I find the internet, I think if I can put Chinese company information on the internet, let the other people to do it, this might be a good future. So we decided to have a great vision for the future at the beginning, just looking for a job, and I don't want to be a teacher. That was the thing. <laughs> Honest so, answer. It is uh, it's well known that you've been an English teacher. So let me, with your permission, allow me to teach you Hebrew. One word. One word in Hebrew. Okay. It's, not, it's not very complicated. In Hebrew, when we want to say it's a slang word, when we want to say something is doing really great or super okay, we say sababa. 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 Looks like Alibaba. Sababa. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Sababa. So one can say, and especially you, mm. Alibaba, Alibaba is Sababa. Sababa. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do it. Sababa. Let's do it together. Yeah. yeah. Alibaba. Alibaba. Is a uh, You see. So. Thank you. <laughs> after you led the largest IPO in history, a few years ago, you are quoted uh, as saying to investors that Alibaba would become the fifth economic entity in the world, following U.S., China, Europe, Japan. What was your vision to achieve that? Yeah, because I never thought we would be today. I never thought I would be today. I think uh, for my, you know, when I leave university, I thought just doing something, and 10, 20 years later, I can go back to teach. I never know, I never realized I can achieve that much. When we look back, today we have uh, close to 70,000 excellent young people in my company. We have so much data, technology, inference, 700 million users, I think all the things does not belong to me. There must be something that somebody in the sky wants, Jack and your people should do something different. That was the thinking in the past 10 years always. But when our company went IPO, today we're like a $400 billion market cap. This does not belong to us. And why we succeed? Because we support the young people, we support the small, medium-sized companies. We support women. And because of supporting these people, they do succeed. So we believe, how can we last our success? We believe we should support more young people. We should support more SMEs. We should support more women. If they are successful, we will be successful. That was, because I believe one thing, when you have a cup of two or three million dollars, that money you belong, belong to you. When you have 20 million dollars, you have problems about money depreciation, you buy this stock or that stock. When you have more than $100 million, $1 billion, that money does not belong to you. It's the social responsibility. If people trust you, ask you to manage the money better. So, so that was the thinking. And then we decided, we say, we should make an economy that is big enough to, with that economy, we can enable every young people, every small business, every woman, globally. They want a global buy, global sell, global deliver, global pay, and global travel with the technology we're giving. We can create 100 million jobs for the world. Today, we create 33 million jobs for China. We hope, we hope the fifth largest economy of the world, that digital economy, can enable 100 million jobs for the world. We can enable 2 billion population in the world. They can shop and buy everywhere. And they can, we can create 10 million small business. They can be profitable through the internet. That was the vision. I don't know in my life can achieve that, but somebody will achieve it. If we continue to do it, if we cannot reach it in 10 years, why not 20 years, why not 30 years? People should continue to do it, and somebody, someday, if somebody really reached that, we'll feel very proud. Thank you. Shall I pour you? No. 
thank you. <laughs> there's tea. By the way, there's, uh, the tea you like is here yeah, on the table. You. That's a good uh, question. <laughs> we are in Israel, the startup nation, and in Tel Aviv, ranked as the world's fifth most innovative city. You have encountered Israeli investors. Okay, it's a short visit. You've met a lot of startupists. You met business people. Could you relate to the Israeli business spirit or our position in the global tech arena? You mean the in the global te our position in the global tech arena? You know what? I will do it easier. Oh yeah. Do you have any plans of a flag of Alibaba in Tel in Israel in Tel Aviv? Absolutely. Um, we we've been thinking internally. We discuss a lot about where in this world Alibaba should have our base labs that that should have our people that working together to reach because the fifth largest economy does not belong to us. Not does not belong to Jack Ma and Ali. It belongs to the, the generation of this, this generation, belong to the world, belong to the, all the young people who believe in the future, belong to the people who believe the technology can enable people. So one of the three countries we talk about is Israel. So we all talk about we should come to Israel, have a lab, and inviting the excellent, smartest young people in Israel Join the force together, let's build up an economy that can empower young people, small business and women. So this is, we think, and, and, and actually we have already invested five companies here, and we only have 12 people here. So this trip we brought uh, almost 40 Alibaba senior management, 40 heroes, not the thieves. <laughs> <laughs> we came together, we learned, we experienced, and we feel it. Everybody is so excited. In the past three days, every night, we, we debate, we discuss, we share until 11.30. Last night, we 11.45. We think we can do a lot of things here. And I think we will continue to invest here. We will join together with uh, join the, the force of the venture capitalists to encourage more startups. And we would love to hire more people here together build the fifth largest economy. It's not the fifth largest economy, does not belong to Jack Ma, does not even belong to China. It belongs to our generation. That's what we think. Yeah. Let, us, let us take some questions from the students. Let's start with uh, Ms. Fairuz Rizkalla. She is uh, from Israel, student of Eastern Asian Studies, Faculty of Humanities. Fairuz, please. Hi. Uh, can you hear anything? No. Nope. Okay. Now is it, can everybody yeah. hear? Great. I'm very honored to be here and to be the first person to ask a question. As said, I am a student of uh, East Asia studies in Chinese and also business management uh, here in Tel Aviv University. So, uh, therefore, I decided today to ask my question both in Chinese and in English. Good. So, it's an opportunity for me to try my Chinese. Um, so, uh, I'll start with the Chinese version. Which is, what is the most valuable professional advice you can give to young people today? Thank you. I think um, everybody is made in a unique and different. So you, you must have a unique and different way. Um, a lot of people today have a lot of complaints. Say, I don't have opportunity. I complained a lot when I was young. and suddenly realized complaint does not solve any problem. We're the opportunity always in the place where people complain. There are so many. If there are so many opportunities in the world, in this world, because there are so many complaints. <laughs> if you can solve the complaint, one of the complaints, that's the opportunity. So this is what we we made. I think young people. If my advice to be an entrepreneur, don't be scared of failure or setbacks, and don't give up. There, People, there are a lot of books written about Alibaba, about me, which I'm scared of. One day I was reading on, uh, 
on the on the plane. That's many years ago in the newspaper. I was reading a, a, a guy introducing a guy very great. And finally, I think people are talking about me. No, that's not me. <laughs> it was it was an article about a, a great person, and then finally I find out they are talking about me. I'm not that great. That's not me, right? I want to say is that if there's a book I want to write. It's only about 1,001 mistakes. We came today to now. We made so many mistakes. People say, you are lucky. Yes, we are very lucky. We've been only 19 years to, to today's size. But we gone through so many tough situations. We made so many mistakes that people cannot Im imagine probably 90 years, just like Israel. For 70 years, your country grew from nothing to today. You have gone through so many tough experiences, and that will make you different. That's what my advice. Next uh, student is Ms. Chen. She's a student from China, studying here in Tel Aviv University. M.A. in archaeology. By the way, your Chinese is very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Ms. Chen, please. Chen. Good evening, Mr. Man. It's a great honor to have you here. And you know, Taobao means a lot for Chinese overseas student, especially in Israel. Um, so uh, my, my question is, if you could magically meet anyone from the past, who would that be? Thank you. Be the any per meet or be the person that person. You mean magically mm -hmm. meet, meet, meet that person. person? Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people I want to meet. <laughs> um, in China, if the person I want to meet is Deng Xiaoping, without him, I would not be. There will be no Alibaba. It's the reform. China was so set back and close. And Deng Xiaoping said, let's open the door. And I, want, I know he loves smoke. When he stopped sno smoke, he got sick and he passed away. <laughs> and I want to smoke, have a cigarette with him, and thank him. And I want to thank a lot of people that in the history that you know, these people made great things that made us. So I think that Deng Xiaoping I would love to meet. And uh, also Albert Einstein, right? And I also love to talk to the, uh, the, the famous uh, the, uh, Jewish, the Karl Marx. You know, he influenced China and all of them. I want to know more about his real thinking behind it. Yeah, so I think in the history you can see, a lot, you, you want to, I want to meet a lot of people. But today, the good thing is by reading books, you talk. But a lot of books, I start to suspect, because a lot of books about us, which is not true. <laughs> Even if we are still surviving, I mean. So talking to the people is a great opportunity. Thank you. Uh, next student is Ms. Uh, Whitney Stewart. She's from the University of Pennsylvania. Oh. She's studying at Tel Aviv University at uh, a study abroad program, which they come for a few months to study here, one semester. So Whitney, Whitney Stewart, please. Hi, Mr. Ma. Thank you so much for being here with us today. It's an incredible honor. I would like to ask if you hire based on a specific educational background. Thank you. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Because if we are high based on the education background, Jack Ma can never be accepted by Alibaba. <laughs> um, when we start the business, we had 18 founders, including me. 17 of them, uh, most of them my students, and most of them, uh, well, today people think these 18 people, the, the smartest people uh, in China. We don't think we are smart. Honestly, we all graduate from the very poor schools. Um, the only thing we did was that we are very united. We all believe the future. We are all optimistic. And we learn through mistakes. We never give up. When Alibaba first IPO'd in 2007 in Hong Kong, 
uh, we had um, like uh, close to 500 millionaires. We made 500 millionaires. And I had a talk with uh, people in the room. I say, hey, everybody, now we are very successful. We are all millionaires. Do you think we are smart than the others? People say, no. Do you think we work harder than the others? No. The early days when we have, because we had a strange name, Alibaba, people say, ah, uh, what, a, what a company. A lot of people think it's a company of telling lies. <laughs> we cannot even hide people. We say, if the people who, who is not that much disabled, we all hide them. Because <laughs> nobody wants to join us. And, but we've gone through it. So I asked those 500 millionaires, there's one thing. Those people who think they're smart, after half year, they all gone. They start to build up their own. They don't believe our model. They don't believe by helping others, by helping small business, you can make money. Because that 20 years ago, only by helping big companies, you can make money. By helping small companies, you don't have a chance. So smart people left us. Those people believe they are excellent. The headhunting company all come. They headhunt our people. We are the people nobody even come to hand us. <laughs> so we stayed. We have no choice. We don't have any company to go, but we believe our future. So after 10 years, we survived. And today, the same. We don't believe those people. I think this is what I give advice to students in Harvard or Tsinghua. If you graduate from famous university, please Respect the people who graduate from the poor schools. Those people like us graduate from a poor universities. Please respect yourself. We have chance if we work together. So, of course, we would love to have uh, great students from Tel Aviv, from Tsinghua, or Harvard. But the most important is that you find the people with the fighting spirit, learning spirit. And this is what we hire people for, not because you, which school you're from. Even to now, we said we would rather not having students from Beida and Tsinghua, because we believe Beida and Tsinghua University should go to the small, medium-sized companies, not us. Because we are helping small, medium-sized companies. If we take all the talents away, because we have, today we have a lot of cash. We can give in high pay to get the best students from university. If the society is poor, no matter how strong you are, your company will be poor. So this is what we believe. They should go to, they should go to SMEs, empower SMEs, and then we help together. That's what we believe. Yeah. Ms. Shani Masti, a student of industrial engineering, please. Hi. Um, I really appreciate the vision that you have for the younger generation. And considering that, I was wondering, what do you wish for your children? My children. I want to be, uh, to be healthy, to be happy, do things what they like. Do not, don't, they don't have to sort of like uh, do what the father wants them to do. They do things what they want. The only thing I think that as the parents should give them health, optimistic for the future, no matter whatever in your life, you will, you will encounter all kinds of things. Be optimistic. And next is education. If she wants whatever education wants, I support her. Rest of it, she goes on her way. So this is what I expect my kids to have, good health and happiness. Don't be, don't be Jack Ma second. It's tough. Because I know it's, I'm not me. Um, I don't want my kids, unless they want to, right? I think I would tell them, it's very lonely. You have to have a strong will. Normally, if you want to be leader, leadership, leaders means loneliness. Leaders means responsibility. If you're responsible for one person, you are yourself. If you are responsible for 8 million people, you are Prime Minister of Israel. 
If you want a response for 1.4 billion people, you are President Xi Jinping. So it's about responsibility. Not everybody would love to do that. And it's okay. But this is what I give my children. I want them to be happy and healthy. Mr. Elliot Ashkenazi from Belgium is a student of, listen to this, International Program for Conflict Resolutions and Mediation Studies. Conflict mediation Studies of Social Sciences. Shalom, Mr. Ma. So I try, you know, to teach you a second word in Hebrew now. <laughs> um, so my question is like this. With all, you know, the due respect I have for you, you have been uh, rejected from Harvard 10 times. And you've proven that you don't necessarily need degrees from this, you know, so-called famous university to succeed in life. So my question is, do you think that the entire educational system should be updated? Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The education system needs to be upgraded. Uh, this is something that I worry about, and this is something that I'm uh, going all around the world telling the government officers that my worry. People worry about uh, high technology, but young people don't worry about it. I feel very few young people worry about the future. Only senior people worry about it. Ah, you know, one day when we, Alibaba used to be on PC, and then suddenly we moved to the mobile phone. A lot of people complain, ah, mobile phone too small. How can you do shopping on such a mobile phone screen? And later we realized because we generation, our eyes are shut, so getting old. Young people never thought, think it's a small. They think it's a big enough. Next to 30 years, the artificial intelligence, the robots, all the high tech will, will do a lot of, will replace a lot of jobs. This is for sure. When human beings designed, invented computers, human beings should know that computer will be much smarter than human beings. They remember, they calculate faster, and they never get upset. They always keep on doing things. <laughs> but don't worry about it. Machine can never win human beings. Machine can do only things machine can do better. Human beings have hearts. Machine does only machine only have chips. So what, what worry me about is the way the things, the cat, the, all the things we teach our kids today are how to remember more things, calculate them faster, all these things machine will do better. Next 30 years, what are the things we should teach our kids that they will be different, they can do better, they can do the things machine cannot do? This is I discussed with the president, they all agree. I think we should teach our kids how to be more innovative, how to be more creative, and how to be more constructive. Human side is more important than the, the knowledge. I think the past 200 years, human being made a huge progress because of the knowledge-driven based education. I think next century, we should focus more on wisdom based, or the human based. So this is, I think, next 30 years, please pay special attention to the education system reform that our kids will never get dis disappointed because of the machine take a lot of jobs. There are a lot of jobs waiting for human beings. And next thing is I want to say is that pay attention to these uh, companies who have less than 30 employees. Please pay special attention to the young people who are below 30 years old because this is the generation who born internet. They will change the world. So education is the key. Great. Next student is uh, Yaden Shefi, student of accounting and business. Please. By the way, we need a lot of social scientists in Alibaba. Because <laughs> we have uh, so many we are managing an economy over 700 million people. That's so complicated. One percent of the bad guys, we got seven million bad guys. <laughs> and how to deal with it? 
Not all, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not only bad guys. Some people have a strange behavior, but it, so what Alibaba need does not only engineers and software programs, we need a lot of so, psychologists, the social behavior experts, and polit you know, this is something that we have to manage. So, yeah, but thank you for the question. Um, okay, so my question is, what was the most valuable professional advice ever given to you? I could, I could, again. What was the most valuable professional advice ever given to you? Given to what me. Pro, yeah. Yeah. What professional advice the best that you can recall was given to you? Well, the first two, three years for Alibaba was, uh, was a disaster. We did not have a business model. People in China did not believe internet. People did not believe e-commerce. What we did, the 18 people together, like, a, like a 40, 50 people. We only have a vision. We don't know how to do it. And then we got an excellent person. He worked more than 30 years in GE. He gave me, said, Jack, it's about the system. It's about the people. Value, mission, and people training. That's the best. And then year 2002, and three, four, I spent a lot of time training our people with the value, mission, and professionalism. And then we got more managers, more leaders than most of the other startups that we started to do better. It's not about business model. Later, it's about create values for the others. And that, that is very good advice for me. And we made Alibaba different. Even to today, we are still so much mission-driven, value-driven. And I believe we want to last 102 years. We were born 1999. Last century, we had one year. We want to go through 100 years this century, plus one year, 102 across three centuries. So in order to survive, we have to be mission-driven, value-driven and people driven. Today we do e-commerce. Tomorrow may not. The day of tomorrow we don't know what we do. But if we're mission, value driven, if we believe young people, if we want to support the other people to be more successful, there is always business model. There is always money to make. That's what we believe. Next student is uh, Mr. Mauricio Figuera from Mexico, from Mexico. He studies laws. You still need lawyers in, uh, in Alibaba? Yeah, we lawyers? need a law. Yeah. We need a law, but not necessarily lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, uh, he studies Master of Law yeah. at the Faculty of Law. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to know which, which is the first trait that you seek in a job candidate. Whichever the what, the first what are you seeking in a job for a new candidate in a job for a, a new a new job candidate? What are you looking for? Oh, what I'm looking for. Not well, lawyers. He doesn't speak no. about lawyers. <laughs> Sorry, we do a lot. We, we have like a two or three hundred lawyers. I, when I was uh, when Alibaba was in my apartment, I never thought a company need a lawyer. I never thought Alibaba in the future will have like five, more than three lawyers. Today we we'll probably have 300 lawyers. <laughs> well, we need a lot of jobs because today we are handling 700 million users. Very, I think we are going to handle 2 billion people. There are so many things that we have never seen. Never imagined before. There is a lot of jobs like a data, cloud computing, AI we call Alibaba intelligence. <laughs> and there are so many things, the machine learning, that we don't know. And I don't think today there is expert of these things. Don't tell me somebody is the expert of e-commerce. Don't tell me somebody is the expert of internet. I tell you a story. 1996, I was invited to join a, a meeting in Beijing about internet. 
At that time, China was not even connected to the internet yet. So I went there, there's about 12 people in a room, they called themselves internet expert. I said, what? We got an internet expert. So they have a lot of worries. Oh, they worry this, worry that, and they should, China should control internet, this. So after 20 years, I found all the things they worried never come out. All the things they did not worry all come out. <laughs> There, is no, there are a lot of experts of yesterday. There's no expert of future. The thing we do is we learn. So that's why you said what kind of job we need, what kind of candidates we're looking for. We're looking for every kinds of jobs. But the thing is that we hire you not because you are qualified. We hire you because you will be qualified if you learn together with us. So this is what Alibaba requests. We hire people. They're ready to learn. They're ready to take risks. They're ready to fail. And they're ready to suffer. And we believe maybe 15, 20 years later, they will be the expert of their own field of the history. That's what we think. We are we're going to, uh, to conclude the session, so let me ask you, before we conclude, a personal question. Uh, you being at the helm of a mega company is always stressful. Uh, we know that you sing, we know that you dance, we know that you're an expert and movie star in martial arts. <laughs> That's all we know. But what do we don't know that you do only for yourself? to relax, to wind up. Tell us something that we don't know. Um, of course, there are a lot of things you don't know, and I... <laughs> and we won't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you say I sing. Um, I sing very good in my bathroom. <laughs> but when I sing, the public always feel. I feel the three times. In, the, in, the, uh, uh, in front of my colleagues, uh, first time I feel the 30,000 colleagues in the big auditorium. I, start, I thought I can sing well in my bathroom, so I started to sing there. <laughs> Phil. And uh, I love to paint. Oh, that's new. Yeah, I love to paint, but uh, I'm, I'm not traditional painting. I think if Picasso can do it that way, why should I? Could I do it that way? <laughs> But I painted, and I got criticized by a lot of artists in China. They say, you are destroy our art. <laughs> um, there, are, there are three Jack Ma's, I think. The first Jack Ma is people's imagination. You think he's great, he's bad. I think Jack Ma is not great, he's not bad. He's not smart, he's a normal. The day when I told my 17 founders in my apartment say, if Jack Ma and his team can be successful, 70 or 80 percent of young people in China can be successful. We're not smart. We don't have money. We don't have technology. We don't have anything. The only thing is that we work together for future. So we said, if we succeed, 80 percent of young people in the world, they can be successful. That was who we are. So people say, Jack, this is the, that your imagination. That is not me. So when I look at people say, hey, Jack Ma, people criticize him. I'm happy. People criticize him. That's not me. <laughs> people praise him and say, no, that's not me. I know very well this is not me. The second C Jack Ma is the CEO chairman of Alibaba. That's a tough job because all the easy, good things my team finished, a tough job. The things that came to me, normally not easy. You have to be, you know, you have to be a CEO-like. This is not me. It's my job. It's me. It's my personal. I'm a straight boy, like any boys, in a poor family. My, my, I'm a very, I came from a very poor family. Poor education. I love to make friends. I love to have fun. So I want to be back to myself. This is what I... I do anything, a lot of things that any boy want to do, I want to do. And I want to enjoy a lot of lives. But this is why I want to retire early. I can go back to myself. Because this is not me. This is my job. And the real Jack is something that I always want to come out. 
And um, yeah, every year I want to see, I want to do something new. Well, thanks so much. Thank. Uh, I would like uh, to thank Professor Frankel, Professor Klafter, Mr. Ma. It was inspiring and frank, I must tell you. Um, dear audience, the, uh, Mr. Ma is shortly be awarded a Tel Aviv University honorary doctorate. So let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very, very honored. Thank you. We can do Alibaba Sababa again. Yeah, Alibaba Sababa. Let's, let's do again. Let's do again. Alibaba is Sababa. Alibaba is Sababa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want us to do a selfie? Okay, yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, Christmas. Please, you're in the middle. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. It's like a photo, like a selfie. You want to hold my camera, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Let's see. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.